Hello. Welcome to lesson 1. This is the first lesson of a set 8 lessons on the field of algorithmic thinking. These lessons have been created in the frame of Erasmus plus KA2 project called Algorithmic Thinking for Migrants Teachers Education. The title of this lesson is called Logical Thinking. This lesson duration is about 75 minutes. We organize the trainees to a group of maximum 15 persons. For the lesson we will need a projector, a questionnaire and a personal computer or laptop for the trainees. The objective aim of this lesson is to teach trainees the importance of logical thinking. What is logic? Logic is a system used for distinguishing between correct and incorrect arguments. By argument, we are referring to the philosophical idea of an argument, namely a chain of reasoning that ends up in a conclusion. Logic includes a set of principles that, when applied to arguments, allow teachers to demonstrate what is true. Teachers need no special training to begin doing this, as this classic introductory example of a logical argument demonstrates. 1. Yanis is a man. 2. All men are mortal. 3. Therefore, Yanis is mortal. Even those of teachers without philosophy degrees understand this argument. They perform this particular brand of reasoning all the time. However, teachers don't always carry it out correctly, which can lead them to form wrong conclusions. And since they mostly use computers essentially to automate their reasoning for teaching, they must learn to perform logic correctly before writing a computer solution or preparing a learning material. In a sense, applying logic is a way of developing and testing a hypothesis. Using this way of thinking, Applying logic assumes teachers already know at least some things for sure and allows them to use that knowledge to arrive at some further conclusions. Inductive versus deductive arguments. It's important to realize that some logical arguments are stronger than others. In fact, teachers can categorize arguments based on their certainty. The two best known categories are deductive and inductive. A deductive argument is the strongest form of reasoning because its conclusion necessarily follows from its premises, so long as it has been constructed properly and the premises are incontrovertibly true. We've already seen an example of deductive reasoning, the assessment of Yeni's mortality. While deductive arguments are strong, they have very strict standards, which makes them hard to construct. A deductive argument can fail in one of two ways. First, one of its premises could turn out to be false. For example, I, Claire is a dog. 2. All dogs are brown. 3. Therefore, Claire is brown. Premise 2 is false, not all dogs are brown. Even though the argument follows the exact same form as the Yenis example, it fails because at least one of its premises is false. Any argument with false premises fails. In computer jargon, this is an example of garbage in, garbage out. The second way a deductive argument fails is when the conclusion doesn't necessarily follow from the premises. For example, I, all tennis balls are round. 2. The earth is round. 3. Therefore, the earth is a tennis ball. This argument fails because of faulty logic. Yes, all tennis balls are round, but so are lots of other things. In symbolic terms, this argument follows the form, all as are B, C is B, therefore, C is an A, but since this is in an invalid form, the argument is automatically invalid too. Boolean logic. Even though much of our reasoning is inductive, computers are not well equipped to deal with shades of gray. Their binary nature makes them more apt to deal with black and white issues. In order to instruct computers to make logical decisions, we need a system of logic that maps well onto this way of thinking. Boolean logic is such a method. It's a form of logic that deals with statements having one of only two values, true or false, usually. Different corresponding values could be used in other contexts, one or zero for example, on or off, black or white. Here are some true or false arguments. 1. Messi is a football player, it is true. 2. Italy is bigger than Greece, it is true. 3. Greece and Italy have no coastline, it is false. Propositions. 
Statements in Boolean logic are also known as propositions, which have several basic properties. First, a proposition can only have one value at any one time. In other words, a single proposition can't be both true and false simultaneously. There is no way to express levels of certainty. True means true, false means false. Consequently, teachers should keep in mind what was said earlier about deductive and inductive arguments, whereas real-life problems often present us with probabilities, the basic Boolean world deals in certainties. Some of teachers' efforts will go into mapping real-world, gray areas onto Boolean black and white. Second, propositions must have clear and unambiguous meaning. For example, a statement like, it is traveling fast, can certainly be evaluated as either true or false. However, it's ambiguous as stated. If it is a car traveling at 150 miles per hour along the motorway, that's certainly fast. Logical operators. Imagine you say, if the weather is sunny and I'm on holiday, then I'm going to lie in the garden. You've just used logical operators. That statement contains two propositions, which serve as conditions for whether, or not, you decide to lounge on the grass. I, the weather is sunny. 2. You're on holiday. If both are true, then you can lie in the garden. If either of them are false, say, the weather is lousy or you have to go to work, then sunning yourself is not an option. That's because you joined them using the logical operator and, which demands that both propositions should be true for the conclusion to be true. Many different logical operators exist. It's worth looking at the most important ones in more detail because, even though we use them daily in informal speech, they have specific meanings in logic that occasionally run counter to our intuitive understanding. To provide illustrative examples, we'll use the operators to describe the rules of a simple game, noughts and crosses. Operator and. The technical name for this operator is conjunction. We just saw an example of a conjunction when we reasoned about whether to lie in the garden, it chains propositions together in a way that all of them must be true for the conclusion to be true. If any of them are false, the conclusion is rendered false also. In classical logical arguments like we've seen so far, the presence of and between propositions is implicit, but we can, and should, include them explicitly. So, for example, I, at least one square on the board is still empty. 2. Neither player has achieved a row. 3. Therefore, the game is still in progress. This can be expressed as if at least one square on the board is still empty and neither player has achieved a row, then the game is still in progress. Operator or, the technical name for this operator is disjunction. This operator chains propositions together in a way that at least one of them must be true for the conclusion to be true also. The only way that the conclusion is falsified is if all propositions are false. For example, if player 1 achieves a row or player 2 achieves a row, then the game is over. In this case, only one condition needs to be true to end the game. In fact, due to the nature of the game, a maximum of one of these conditions can be true simultaneously. Or can also be used in cases when both conditions can be true at the same time. If a player achieves a row or all squares become occupied, then the game is over. Operator not, the technical name for this operator is negation. This operator doesn't chain propositions together itself, rather it modifies a single proposition. Specifically, it flips the truth value. Sometimes, negating a proposition can make it easier to express the chain of reasoning. For example, if a square is not occupied, then a player may add their symbol to that square. Lesson activity. Trainer shares a sheet with true slash false propositions. Trainers, fill in the sheet for 10 and at the end they all together discuss the results. The discussion follows last 10 minutes.